Welcome everyone. We will start the inauguration of the live. Uh, I'd like to give you, I mean, since many of you have come to this place for the first time, a glimpse about the academy. This is started way back in 2008 as an initiative between IIT Bombay and Monash University. To my understanding, the first in the world to start a jointly batch PhD program. One of the things that you know, we, we should all celebrate and love about science is, is the opportunity for collaboration. It brings people together from different parts of the world, different cultures, different experiences. And I think this is really one of the great benefits of this partnership. Promoting industry academia collaborations building and nurturing an ecosystem for deep tech entrepreneurship. Now, Dr. Oni Krishnan mentioned about the significance of bio, uh, biosciences and the collaboration with uh, Monash and IIT Bombay. I would like to mention that uh, India is a fairly large country, is an emerging economy, but has a heavy dependence on medical device imports. So it's not only important, but it's critical that we not only make in India, but invent and innovate in India to solve problems here. We at IIT Bombay, I think, you know, have a long-standing relationship with Monash University, our partners. And wherever I've gone over across the globe, you know, I get the same question in the other universities, okay, what is your kind of partnership that you have with Monash University? So everybody has taken a note of the kind of deep, engaging relationship that we have fostered over the years with Monash. Yeah. So my research area is primarily in microfluidics. So I, my relation to AMR or infectious diseases is kind of tangential. So I focus on using microfluidics to develop platform technologies for different applications. So I'm pretty application agnostic, but AMR is another, one of the areas that I'm particularly interested in. Services. So although most of you would be knowing TCS as a IT company, we have a big enough research group. Uh, there are around 700 to 800 researchers and scientists working in different areas. Uh, as part of the life sciences R&D, me and my team, uh, we have been working in the areas of genomics, metagenomics, systems biology, a little bit of infectious diseases research and all. Thank you to the IITB Monash team for making us so welcome. Uh, um, so so um, I guess I'm a little bit of an imposter here, um, but I feel like as a group of us from Clayton who are representing a much bigger AMR uh, initiative that um, is really born and expanded and developed by um, at least two key people, and that's Professor Trevor Lithgow and Professor Anna Traven, who are the they're directors of different uh, entities which uh, are really aiming to develop the next workforce and really to focus Virulence, on... Virulence, uh, the way we see virulence is basically uh, from the fact that we see that there is mortality associated with the host. Now, uh, yes, TB is low, so small, slow growing, so most of the cases the infection is latent and uh, have really progressed so we we also need to look at tests that can be performed at doctor's clinic right. to have that impact but well there's uh proteins that are responsible for glycosylation or for putting a sugar or making a particular lipid which changes the surface charge so that just comes on and comes off so it's not only just to monitor what's changing but the dynamic that the time related changes um, that the bacteria is responding to its environment so Absolutely. Uh, biofuels, biorefinery is something that, uh, you know, I got my training and so I'm continuing that uh, further. Uh, We're using two, uh, sort of two different approaches. One is uh, for, for human health approaches, we, uh, you know, we don't have a very definitive model. We are, you know, we are working toward it. In, uh, in Marathi, there is a saying called Vekti Titka Prakruti which means that as many individuals there are as many types of health you know and health the health is basically individualized uh, so every person reacts differently to different things but not use the animal based uh, meat 
And that's where uh, a lot of research has happened. So, th so th there are three areas of research. One is that you take your plant proteins, like soya or pea proteins, and then you flavorize it. Uh, whether you want to make a chicken or, or you make a texture, right? And I think there are the food science and food technologies. So in India, and it's interesting that, you know, I'm the only one from India and three of you from Australia. It'll be good to get, you know, different perspectives of what I've seen in India versus what's actually prevailing in Australia. Because I think the standards of medical practice are very different. The hospital system is certainly not flawless. And I have a very similar story for my father. Um, in fact, multiple errors, medical errors, including infection. Um, but that's like an all or nothing approach and or mechanism, and that's much more nuanced than that. So that's an important part of it too. So you don't need induction. Um, I think that's one of the benefits of you know, we study genetic kidney disease, the IPS drive cells contain that genetic phenotype, then, then we can... From your perspective, what are the key challenges in implementing digital health solutions? Maybe things you've experienced or also just your observations? And Oxy is a smart report, you know? And many companies without taking the name, and they're really uh, doing good in that, uh, that basically they're giving you one page summary of your key vitals, uh, key lab parameters, and if they're suggesting also, and these are the very simple decision tree or classification models, but the key is the back end where you basically, the coding, the medical ontologies, like ICD-10, SNOBED CD uh, system, you bring into the, uh, in the oh, day to day increase, obesity, uh, due to the lifestyle modifications, high fat diet food. Every day the thing is progressing and you are changing and your requirements are changing, it becomes even more challenging. Yeah. That's, that's, I, I kind of... Uh, really, I don't have words to thank you. Because we can't conduct this kind of program without your active participation. So thanks to each one of you once again. Thank you.